Um, obviously, we want to hang on to all of our student athletes, and a lot of the stuff that we're doing is putting in programming that helps retain our student athletes. Um, and I think when we do that, and it can be hit on it, is everything we do here has to align with what the university schools are. And retention is a huge part of what the university is doing as well. And so if we can put together programming that retains our student athletes, that helps the university as well. And so a lot of these things, when you're talking about nutrition and mental health and services that we can provide to our student athletes that they may not get anywhere else, I think that's going to help their experience here and it's going to keep them there. What kind of input did President Cruzado have on this? <laughs> well, she's the, she's the driving force. Um, and to be honest, uh, when I when I was looking at, at Montana State and this job, I, I looked at the university strategic plan. And that was the one thing that I said, we have to have that. Because this, this strategic plan gets all of our units, all of our sport programs, our coaches, our staff, everybody on the same page. Everybody knows the goals that we want to accomplish now. And actually, the public knows that. It gets everyone on the same page. Now, how each individual unit and program um, works to accomplish that to help us achieve those is going to be a little bit different. But they now have this. We all have the same vision. We all know what we're trying to accomplish. Um, but now that all stems from President Cruzado and her executive team, and she's put together an unbelievable team. They they work well together, and hopefully, athletics is just another piece of that puzzle on a campus to really accomplish the goals for the university. So I mean, this seems like really comprehensive of anything you'd see at any school. You know, it covers coaching, players, championships, mental health. Facilities. Is there anything um, that was left out that maybe would go in like more of a ten-year plan? You know, I, I, I'll let them answer that. I, I don't think so. I think what this what this identifies are the needs that we felt that we had right now. These are the things that we need to do in order to be competitive, uh, in order to re recruit and retain the best student athletes, the best coaches, and the best staff. Uh, so I, these were the most immediate and private priorities that we had right now. Is there something? There probably is, um, but I think in the next five years, these are the things that we definitely want to focus on. Anything else? Yeah, I think the NCA is so fluid right now that we don't know. It's so fluid. Years, is that yes, it's it's changing so much. I mean, who would have thought that cost of attendance was? I mean, I, I think there were some discussions early on, but that wasn't something I think ten years ago people would have said, "Hey, we're going to be a cost of attendance." Um, so I think the move. Yeah, for us to look at, so cost of attendance is um, the autonomy five conferences that are able to offer scholarships that are equal to the cost of attendance. Currently, the non-autonomy conferences um, can offer um, traditional scholarships, room, board, books, fees, and tuition. And then the autonomy conferences have passed legislation that now allows them to offer that cost of attendance, which is usually a gap between a, a traditional scholarship and um, a full cost of attendance that that institution says this is the real cost, which typically includes miscellaneous and transportation expenses. So it's it's the number that they they talk about paying players, you know, yeah. paying student athletes. Well, th this is a, it's a financial aid package that that every school has. It's a, it's an actual cost of attendance, uh, and there's just a gap in there what that financial aid package is. It has to do with the food too, right? When they pass the thing of like how many meals they have to have offered. That's separate and distinct, but um, I mean. Yeah, uh, the cost of attendance scholarships are, for us, it's about a gap of $3,700 um, that our student athletes you know, don't, don't have between the cost of what, that it actually takes to attend the institution and tuition fees. And what we give them in the scholarship. Mm -hmm. That's $3,700 a year? Yes. Okay. okay. Interesting. Yeah. Who so, in the Big Sky has cost of attendance? North Dakota. North Dakota, that's it. Idaho. Yeah, I think in some sports. I don't yeah. think they did it across the board. Yeah. But that's that's new. It's a concept that was developed within, I would say, not within the last ten year, you yeah. know, five years, five years. It came on board. Yeah. Um, so we don't know what the NCAA is going to look like, and we don't know what what we might be in ten years. But in five years, I think these are really realistic goals for us, and we're going to put our financial priorities behind these goals to make them happen. And so that's where Leon talks about everybody knowing what direction we're going. Everybody's gonna be on board and when it comes to making priorities financially, we're gonna, they're all gonna be behind this. And I think that's uh, something really special that we can all be behind and, and be supportive of and everybody's heading in the same direction. And uh, to me that's really exciting because I think uh, we all know what the end goal is now and we're gonna get there. Yeah, what revenue sources are you thinking? I mean, you think you're pretty well tapped out in football, right? I mean, you sell out uh, 
they're, you're not going to get much more on television, right? Uh, well, basketball attendance, is that? Uh, yeah, I would say you know, attendance. Tickets or? in general. Uh, there's still there's still room in football. Um, there's is still, there? Yeah, there's still there's still room in, in basketball, of course. Um, and obviously, success is helping that. You know, we, we saw a big jump last year in basketball. Uh, fundraising dollars, you know, Bobcat Club donations, things like that. We've got to, we need to do more reaching out. We, we have great fans that have supported us for a long time. Now it's time to take that and go find some, go find new people to get involved as well. Obviously, Bozeman is growing um, and new people are moving to town and, and new people that have really maybe have never experienced uh, um, MSU or Bobcat athletics. And how do we go out and tap into those people and, and get them on board with what we're doing? Uh, I think we're a, a great entertainment source. I think it's something that, that we provide that, that the community really kind of rallies behind. And uh, we just got to do a better job of reaching out and engaging those people and bringing them into the fold. But, but basically, you're saying uh, attendance is the biggest. Really, that we, really we, have th we have three. We have uh, you know tickets. We have uh, revenue generation based on fundraising. And we have sponsorships. I mean, those are basically our three primarily sor sources of funding that we can, uh, that we can go after. Um, we have sponsorships for your TV games, for your radio games, or for the signage that we have in the signage. stands, uh, game sponsorships, all the advertising you see at our games, things That's like that. Yep. yep, those are our three primary sources of funding, external. Can I make a suggestion as part of this plan? Yeah. Is that Please. you have a have a, a media class for your athletes yeah. that they know how to do interviews, they know how to treat the press and things like that. Right? I know it sounds kind of but I, I really think that would be helpful for them, yeah. and certainly for us. Yeah. We actually are working on that for this summer. Are you? So, yep. We might call you up and ask you some feedback. I was going to say, I'm retired. I'll believe it. Yeah, you just paid me. Well, hey, pizza and sweatshirts. That's how we get it. That's how I roll. But how many big-time college athletes that probably have had media training have been able to come back to the school? Well, but they don't want to be as stupid as they <laughs> I think my kids are actually pretty good compared to the Usually help. But I think that's part of the education process, you know, with yeah, the, and it's all for them. Yep. Yeah, it's, it's all for them. They talk about the with the community. How they talk with the media, you know, what's right on social media. There's a lot of yeah, actual right. things that are out there. Right. That, yeah, that, so is that part of theme four? Is that one of the resources? And if that's one of the resources in learning and leading, what are there some other ones other than just media training? Yep. I'm sorry, I don't know if you remember. Oh, learning and leading. Okay, so uh, a strategy in here is certainly to meet those metrics um, that the NCAA has coming out in 2019. So one of the strategies might be to increase our APR and our GSR and our federal graduation rates. But it also talks about how we might further support our student athletes in terms of leadership development, which is, I think, the one that you're um, talking about. And although, so I don't know how. It's not done yet, <laughs> but one of the things that we're exploring is working with the Leadership Institute on campus to develop a leadership, a sophomore level leadership class for us. Let me back up. We're not exactly exploring it yet, but it's an idea that we have to uh, explore developing a sophomore level leadership class that would then be a um, stepping stone for our students to get into the leadership certificate program. Um, so that's one of, that's like an idea for one of the strategies. So we are going to take these strategies and then work with the people across campus to develop them. So they are going to be evolving over time. But that's an example that I can give you of something that we've talked about. Is that kind of what you're looking for? Is there any other concrete things or things you're definitely going to do other than exploring? Well, I think at the end of the day, I would want that developed. I would want a leadership development program for our student athletes, um, which might include that um, we already have a freshman level class, so a sophomore level class would keep them in a cohort, which is something that I've talked about yeah. for a while. Um, so right now I say exploring only because I'm uh, catching it just a little bit because I don't know it. in five years if you come back and say, hey, is this done? It might look totally different because I haven't talked to the Leadership Institute about it, but it's something that we want to do is develop that leadership program. The other thing that we're looking at is some diversity um, in our diversity piece is looking at a diversity um, group to help mentor our um, minority student athletes as well, and then some particular program centered around that and helping them get integrated. I know we've kind of dovetailed the education bit, but I guess to go back to national exposure, um, thinking with social media, do you think maybe streaming on Facebook, Facebook Live, making events, and maybe streaming on Twitter that might open up possibilities and maybe help make your brand more national or at least more regional? 
on, on the next <laughs> sort of so, level playing field? Or? Social media is huge, obviously, and I'm really glad you brought that up because that's something that our sports information staff, um, Tom, Bill, and Andrew are really taking the charge on. I think there's been a significant change, um, a significant um, impact that we've been able to make the last year. So just being that much more active on social media, letting our coaches be active. If you guys follow football, they've done some crazy awesome stuff on their accounts. Um, and I think the idea of streaming games um, and using that to build our national exposure is a, a great idea. Obviously, we're seeing everybody do that from the NFL um, to the NBA to the WNBA, um, really across the country and across the professional as well as the college level. Um, with that piece does come the rights like we talked about earlier. So that's a piece that you have to kind of explore um, since people do pay for the rights to stream our games. Um, but especially for a lot of our sports that don't necessarily have that television exposure, um, that is the opportunity to really start um, to continue to build our brand from um, one of the strongest in the region to one of the strongest in the country. And I think, you know, just to, to kind of connect on that as well, is that we, we want to push the envelope as far as we can when it comes to social media. Um, but when, she, and when Bethany talked on the rights, one of the reasons we do these plans is because there are so many other people and other organizations that are involved in these things. And so when you take a look at uh, even the Big Sky Conference, they are, they've got TV deals and things that we fit within. And so we've got to stay within you know, kind of the, their TV packages and the, their TV rights. And so we can't branch out from that and, unless we have the okay to do that. And so uh, we've got to make sure that the things that we definitely want to do have the approval from everybody that, that and all the different parties that we work with. And so that's, an, again, another good reason why this plan is so important because we do have big ideas and we do want to spread our wings as much as we can, but we also are still bound by you know university policies and procedures, Board of Regents, Big Sky Conference, NCA. There's certainly things we've got to work within as well. Yeah, and I guess uh, kind of going off of that, it's like how, is it tough to kind of work within those lines, I guess, having to deal with rights and revenue and um, you know, I wouldn't say it's difficult. I, I, I think, you know, you know that they laid it out there. I mean, you know kind of what you're dealing with. Um, I think, you know, Kami, I think, mentioned this, like with the NCA, everything is evolving. And I think even with rights fees and things like that, it's all evolving. And, and we're going to see that change probably within the next five years um, because you see all the big conferences and all their TV deals. Well, what's it going to look like? in a few years when some of those networks aren't paying that amount. You know, you're talking about Netflix and you're talking about Amazon all these other, and exactly right, you're talking, and, and you said it, you know, Facebook and Twitter, they're doing all these streams. What is that really gonna look like in five years? I think it's gonna change drastically. Um, and so I think it's just, it's just kind of navigating and, and making sure that at least we're ready for it when it does happen. Uh, but I think then we can bring it, being in the institution and in, uh, in the athletic department, we can take it to the conference and say, this is kind of what we're seeing. How can we evolve with, as a conference to really push uh, and, and get more exposure for our, our, all of our teams. Leon, you mentioned working hand-in-hand -hand with Cruzado. With all the things they've done on the academic side of things in the capital campaign they've had so much success with, does that put pressure on the athletic department to keep pace? I don't think, I don't think it's pressure. I think, uh, I think it gives us uh, a lot of opportunities, and I think it gives us a lot of, a lot of hope that, uh, that the things that we're trying to accomplish in here, that we're going to be able to get it done. Uh, I think there's a lot of a passion out there for, for Montana State as a whole. Uh, but I think there's also, we've got our passionate fans for athletics and we've got our little, our niche and uh, I think people are kind of sitting there waiting and ready for, for things to, to take place and this is step one.